okay so uh, in the last class we were looking at uh, discourse analysis uh, with cohesion and referential analysis so today we will be looking at uh, another aspect of discourse analysis which is about discourse coherence okay so uh, so what is coherence now if you look at this example uh, this is a sentence biomass is emerging as a viable source of power for rural elect electrification in india at first glance, Kirga Valu may look like a typical village in southern uh, Karnataka. Okay, this is uh, a paragraph. So, uh, it actually feels very odd, right? So, first we are talking about biomass is emerging as a viable source of power for rural electrification in India. So, we are talking about biomass and electrification, but suddenly the, our idea changes to uh, that is, uh, Kirga Valu may look like a typical village in southern Karnataka. It's totally different concept, right? So there is no cohesion here, right? So here, each sentence is a well-formed and independently interpretable sentence, but the passage appears odd because uh, there is no connection between the first sentence and the second sentence. So ba basically, we say that the discourse is said to be incoherent. It's not coherent. Okay, so coherent is basically, uh, uh, when you talk about a set of sentences, there should be some uh, sort of link between these, uh, the ideas in these sentences. Earlier when we talked about cohesion, we talked about link within the text. We are referring to, say, a previous word from the next sentence and so on. That, that is what was cohesion. But here we are talking about coherence. So between the sentences within a paragraph or within a, a segment of the text, there should be some sort of association or some relationship between the sentences within that segment. Okay, that is what we uh, say is coherence. Right. Now we look at another example. Section 5.2 deals with sentence level meaning representation. In particular, we discuss the general characteristics of meaning representation languages and computational approaches to semantic analysis. Next, we discuss the internal structure of words, their relationships and their meanings in section 5.2. So, this is a paragraph which is taken from uh, uh, NLP text. Okay. So, sentence 1, if you look at it, it introduces the topic okay, about semantic analysis. So, sentence level meaning representation. And then, uh, we are going into further details in the next sentence. So, we discuss, what do we discuss in sentence level meaning representation? We talk about general characteristics of meaning representation languages, as well as computational approaches to semantic analysis. And then, we move on to something else next. So, there is, actually, there is some sequence associated with it, there is some continuity in what we are speaking about, right? There is some sort of link between the different sentences. It might be a temporal link or a meaning meaningful link between sentences. So uh, we can say that different types of relationships can exist between sentences in a discourse. Okay, discourse or a discourse segment or a segment of sentences. They can have. There can be different types of relationships which can exist between those sentences. And such sort of relationships are called coherence relationships. Okay, coherent relationships. So, coherence relations. So, what are uh, the different types of, uh, we will look at the different types of coherence relation, relations first. So, one is result. So, result, the relation, so we are talking about two sentences and one is the result of the other. That is what result means. Say, we look at the example first. So, the tin woodman uh, was caught in the rain. Okay, tin woodman is uh, maybe a tin, uh, uh, tin uh, something made of tin which looks like a man, let us say, for uh, understanding. So, the tin woodman was caught in the rain. So, his joints rusted. Okay, as a result of being caught in the rain, it uh, his joints rusted. So, the one, uh, the second one is the result of the first. That is what result relationship is. So, here the, the formal definition is we infer that the state or the event is asserted by S0. S0 is our sentence, first sentence is so 0 and it causes the event asserted by S1. Okay. So, uh, this causes this. 
or the second one is a result of the first that is a relationship result next is explanation okay so one sentence is an explanation of another so we can look at the example first we have john hid bill's car keys uh, he was drunk so why did john hide bill's car keys because he was drunk so the second sentence is an explanation for the first so that is what explanation is so formally infer that the state or event asserted by s1 causes or could cause a state of first so this causes this okay since he is drunk uh, john hid bills car keys next a relationship is parallels okay parallel again we look at the example the scarecrow wanted the brain the tin woodman wanted the heart right so there is a parallel between these two sentences first we have a, the scarecrow here a parallel is tin woodman and the first uh, is wanted the brain but here we wanted the heart okay so there is a parallel relationship between the similar right so uh, formally speaking infer uh, p of a1 a2 etc you are inferring something this statement called p from assertion s0 from the sentence s0 you are inferring something and you are inferring something else p of uh, b1 b2 etc from assertion s1 where ai and b are similar for all i okay there is a similarity between the parameters within the sentence so we saw the scarecrow and parallel we have the tin woodman and uh, scarecrow wanted brain and here we have heart okay elaboration as the name itself implies one is an elaboration of the other say for example um, okay dorothy was from kansas she lived in the midst of the great kansas friends so uh, basically both are the same but the second sentence has uh, a more it is an elaborate version of the first so uh, the uh, formal in uh, the explanation is infer the same proposition pre from assertions as not an s1 okay you are inferring the same information from both the sentences but the second one is a more elaborate version of the first next is occasion occasion means uh, a change of state can be in, in uh, inferred from assertion as not whose final state can be inferred from s1 so basically there is a change of state okay that is what occasion means so go out of this door so you're moving to out of this door there is a change of state turn right and go to the second room these are some of the relationships which can occur between sentences within a discourse or within a text discourse segment a segment of text okay so we, we move on to another term which is uh, uh, which is important in discourse analysis or in discourse coherence is called discourse segmentation so discourse segmentation is separating a document into a sequence of subtopics or segments okay we are uh, if we have a large document whatever uh, whichever ha are related to each other set of sentences which are related to each other or which are coherent between each other are segmented to form a group which is called a segment okay so discourse segment uh, it is it stretches of discourse in stretches of discourse in which that is areas of discourse in which sentences are addressing the same topic they are relating the same topic or you can say a sequence of clauses that display local coherence it is locally coherent those sentences are coherent with each other and uh, and also a sequence of clauses possibly interrupted by sub, sub segments forming a hierarchical structure okay these clauses Uh, uh which are related to each other and in between we might have sub segments also other segments might come in between we look at an example then we will understand what the sub, sub segment interrupts a sequence of clauses and it might form a hierarchical structure which also we will come to see later okay okay so we will look at that okay this is an example so you have the engine sm uh, so you have the uh, so this is actually a conversation between two people e and a other people and they are talking about the assembling of a uh, a lawn mower okay they are assembling a machine lawn mower machine so uh, first person is saying so you have the engine assembly finished now attach once that is done now attach the pull rope to the top of the engine okay 
So once the assembly is finished, now you have to attach the pull rope to the top of the engine. Now he is saying, by the way, did you buy gasoline today? So the other person responds, yes, I got, I got some when I bought the new uh, lawn mower wheel. I forgot to uh, take the gas can with me, so I bought a new one. The other person, did it cost much? No, and we could use another way to keep the, uh, uh, no, we could use another any way to, another, uh, say the gas can, any way to keep the tractor. So he responds, okay, how far have you got? Uh, did you get it attached? So if you look at this, so initially they were speaking about the assembly of the lawn mower. So he is asking whether the assembly has finished. And then if it has finished, now attach the pull rope. That is what he said. And in between the conversation moves on to a different topic. Uh, so you uh, now at this point, they're talking about buying gasoline and then about um, uh, how he bought it and how he needed to buy another can and how what was the cost and so on. So the lines from this point to this point uh, are actually forms a different sort of uh, co cohesive segment okay so you can have you can have interruptions in between that is what we earlier saw right you can have possible su sub segments which interrupt a sequence of clauses uh, so we can say that the first two sentences along with these last two sentences form a segment and similarly these others actually form another segment okay so this is what a uh, uh, discourse segment is Okay, we will look at another example where discourse segment can be related, sentences within a discourse segment can be related to form a hierarchy. Okay, so uh, the example here is John went to the bank to deposit his paycheck. That is sentence one. He then took a train to Bill's car dealership. Uh, he need, uh, why did he go there? He needed to buy a car. The company he works for now is in uh, near any public transportation. That is why he needed to buy a car. Now, he also wanted to uh, talk to Bill about their uh, softball league. Okay, so he did buy a car as well as he wanted to talk to Bill about uh, their softball league. And that is why he took a train to Bill's car leadership, uh, dealership. Uh, okay, so how can we organize this into hierarchy based on the relationships which exist between them? Okay, so if we start here... Uh, John went to the bank to deposit his paycheck. Okay, so that is sentence one. He then took a train to Bill's car dealership. Uh, uh, car dealership. Pronouncing it all wrong. Okay, so John went to the bank to deposit his paycheck and then he took a train to uh, Bill's car dealership, right? So this is basically a transition of state, so we can say it is an occasion. So from uh, here, he went to this point. Now, if you look at this point, he then took a train to Bill's car dealership. Uh, he needed to buy a car. So, why did he uh, take a train to Bill's car dealership? Because he needed to buy a car. And also, he wanted to talk to Bill about his softball league. So, you have two reasons for uh, this person taking a train to Bill's car dealership. So, this uh, uh, S2... Um, why did he go to uh, take a train to Bill's car dealership? Uh, because of two reasons, right? And these two reasons form a parallel. Okay, so one of these is he needed to buy a car. Now, he needed to buy a car. Why did he need to buy a car? The company he works for now is in nearly near any public transportation. Okay, so uh, that is an explanation. Why he needed to buy a car? is because he works uh, where he works for is not near any public transportation so you are relating s3 and s4 here s4 actually forms an explanation for s3 so these two are combined and uh, uh, the parallels are actually between um, he needed to buy a car and he wanted to talk to a bill about his softball league right so, S3 and S5 becomes a parallel. So, S3 is here and an explanation for S3 is S4. And this together forms a parallel with S5. S5 is he wanted to talk to Bill. So, you have uh, uh, these two are related. So, a parallel forms here. And uh, 
okay and this uh, forms an explanation for s2 that is he took a train to bill's car dealership so this is how we form a hierarchical relationship between the different sentences within the discourse and this is known as a discourse structure okay. so in discourse analysis uh, using uh, coherence basically we want to identify the coherent those uh, sentences which are locally coherent okay those sentences which are locally coherent and within that we would like to get the structure within the uh, the uh, discourse segment itself and that is represented using a discourse structure like this okay this is another example which we have uh, jack and sue went to buy a new lawn mower since the old one was stolen now sue had seen the men who took it and she had chased them down the street but they had driven away in a truck okay so this is again an ex uh, actually uh, an explanation about how uh, the, that is after being stolen so that is we are talking about uh, so seeing the men and so this is actually a different discourse than what uh, we are talking here here we are talking about buying a new lawn mower now after looking in the store they realized they couldn't afford a new one and uh, uh, why why is that they couldn't afford a new one is represented using the segment 3 that is by the way jack lost his job last month so he has in been short of cash he has been short of cash recently and so on so basically if you look at the sequence of sentences here we start with one discourse or one segment of a discourse and then we move on to another segment segment 2 here and uh, here we have a continuation of the segment 1 and again here we have a continuation of segment 1 here and so on so this is how we analyze it okay and uh, we also have to get familiar with another term which is known as a discourse stack so when we are processing when we are sequentially processing segments like this uh, in order to actually process it in the right way we are processing segment 1 and then we move on to segment 2 so segment 1 uh, is still active right so if we are making use of a stack so that information about whatever we have processed can be stored on the stack and now currently since we are moving on to segment 2 we can uh, have say something like this so initially after reading uh, a we are in segment 1 right we are reading a and b then we will be in segment 1 and uh, when we uh, read c we are moving on to segment 2 now the currently processing segment is segment 2 which has to be on the top of the stack because anything which is processed right now is always on the top of the stack so this sort of representation is known as a discourse stack we just getting familiar with all terminologies but basically in discourse analysis with coherence what we want is given a text sequence or given a document we want to identify the different discourse segments within those which are uh, locally coherent to each other that is the basic idea and in order to identify the local coherence we need to have the different relationships and relationships can be represented using a uh, discourse structure which is a hierarchical structure and why do we do this why do we do discourse analysis uh, based on coherences uh, in uh, it has many applications say in text summarization maybe we have a big text and we want to summarize that text so we can identify the different uh, uh, the different discourses uh, discourse segments within that text once we have that uh, we can uh, we can identify the different ideas within because we summarize in say text so we have we have the different ideas which are presented so identify the different segments and from those segments again based on the relationships we can identify what the sentences which are important and then generate a summary that is one of the applications of discourse analysis using coherence okay